Lou Gemignani. I'm a therapist here at Children's Hospital. Welcome. Um, I'm here today to start you off on your um, oxygen delivery device module. I'm going to talk to you about flow meters. We have three different types of flow meters. The first two are oxygen flow meters. This one here goes from a half a liter up to 15 liters, and the next one down is a low flow meter. It goes from 30 cc's up to 4 liters of oxygen. And the last one we have is an air flow meter. It's reserved for our trach patients only to deliver humidity for patients who have no oxygen requirement. It's either on zero or eight. So when placing these on the wall, you want to screw it in, and you might hear a little bit of air. It's because it's under a lot of pressure. And when you make sure when you turn it on that your the ball is going to go up and it's going to stay. So if you have a trach patient requiring humidity but not an oxygen requirement, call respiratory. We'll bring you an air flow meter. You want to make sure that when you connect it, it's connected to the air, it's the yellow. And as you screw it in, you want to make sure that there's air coming out of it. So the only two things you can have on is either off or on at eight. Now I want to talk about tank safety. If you're needing to transport a patient with oxygen, your first place you want to go is in the tank bin here. Every tank in here is 100% full. A considered full tank has 1,800 PSI. So grab your tank, make sure that the dial is in the green, that's 1,800 PSI. Once you take a tank out of here, do not put it back. It's considered now in use. Once the tank is used, it can go in here. If you're reaching for a tank, you want to make sure that it has above 1,000 PSI. Once a tank has 1,000 PSI or less, it is considered empty and do not use it. It's put in this tank here, in this bin here, and um, it'll be refilled the next morning. When transporting with an oxygen tank, you want to make sure that you either have it in a carrier individually like this, or the carrier underneath the patient's bed, or in one of these carriers attached securely to the patient's bed. You should never put an oxygen tank on the floor where it's unsecured. Always have it secured in some type of carrier. Great. Hi, I'm Katie. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the simple mask. You attach it to an O2 flow meter with no humidification. The liter flow must be set at 5 to 8 liters to adequately wash out carbon dioxide under the mask. It comes in two sizes, the pediatric and the adult, which is chosen based on patient facial size. The FiO2 delivered is between 40 to 50%. This is a short-term device because there's no humidification. It may be used for things like transport, post-anesthesia, or at the bedside as a standby oxygen delivery device. Speaking of standby oxygen, in some areas of this hospital, you may see a funnel use. The liter flow must be set at 10 to 15 liters, and the FiO2 is variable. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the nasal cannula. This oxygen delivery device delivers up to 40% FiO2 depending on patient inspiratory demand. This is the preferred device for transport. If the patient is not on transport and in the room, they must always be hooked up to a bubble humidifier. When the bubble humidifier is on, you should see bubbles. This cannula comes in three different sizes, the infant, which the flow should be maxed out at two liters, the pediatric, the flow should be set at one to four, and the adult, the flow should be set at one to six. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill from Respiratory. We're just going to go over some aerosolized delivery oxygen devices. We're going to start off with the setup of the device. We have two different manufacturers out there currently that we're going to use, and we'll go over both of these. Um, the first one is this large nebulizer, and it's prepackaged with a holder like this that we have to connect to the water bottle. First thing we're going to do is take this yellow cap off and we're going to insert the top part into the uppermost chamber. We're going to keep twisting it until it can't twist any farther and it's going to look something similar to this. Now the top, top part we're going to insert right into the middle show you that in a second. And that's how it's going to look when the device is properly connected. And then all you do is just screw the uppermost part onto the flow meter and there is the setup for this current device. 
We also have another device, very similar. And this one's a little bit easier. All we do is twist off the top blue portion, just like that. And we insert the jet portion of it right into the center. And then we twist it on just like that. And then this portion here just screws on to any flow meter, just like this one did. All right, so once we connect the nebulizer portion, we need to connect large bore tubing to it. So this is the blue large bore tubing that's available on all the nursing units. And what we do is we just insert it, it only fits one way, to the output chamber on these nebulizers. All right, this is a close-up of the other device that we have. And as you can see, this little blue dial has percentage of oxygen right on it. Now this little knob kind of sticks out where my finger is, and we could actually turn this little blue dial and we could dial in the precise FiO2 that we want to have delivered to the patient. So right now we're approximately at 35% and as we discussed earlier any FiO2's less than 50% uh, we need approximately 5 to 10 liters per minute from the flow meter. Now as we turn the dial past 50% we're on approximately 70 right now, 70% FiO2, we need to increase the flow, anything above 10. So between 10 and 15 liters per minute for FiO2s greater than 50. This right now, if we don't connect anything else to it, this is called blow by oxygen. So if your patient is requiring a little bit of oxygen, they may be fussing around a little bit and you can't get the mask on the patient, you could just provide a little blow by oxygen and this mist goes into the nose, mouth, whatever the patient might be breathing, if they're a nose breather or a mouth breather, and we're providing a cool mist along with oxygen. The only negative, negative thing about this is we can't guarantee how much oxygen is being delivered. Even though we're set at 40, obviously we're entraining a lot of room air and diluting it further, so this is not good if you need to really increase oxygen saturation from the pulse oximeter. All right, so moving along to the devices, here is a face tent. This is used uh, primarily on adult patients or larger pediatric patients, and what it does is it fits right underneath the chin, and we're able to go ahead and connect it just like that, and we're providing blow-by oxygen and humidification right under the chin and the patient gets to breathe this in. This is great if the patient is claustrophobic and they don't like the mask around their face. Um, this kind of just sits nice under, under the chin and it passively goes into the nose and mouth area. Another device that we have, a couple devices here, are the actual aerosol masks. And these fit right on the nose and um, mouth of the patient. And again, we can adjust the FiO2 and the, uh, the oxygen percentage and flow going to the patient. And this, if the patient can tolerate it, then this is a great way to um, deliver it because now it's more confined and we're able to manage a little bit better flow and guesstimations of the oxygen being delivered to the patient uh, because there's not a lot of room air entrainment with this. Now for the pediatrics, we have a smaller one. Okay, so same exact concept, as long as they're able to tolerate it, put it right over the nose and mouth area, and you're good to go. There's a little clip on here, a little silver clip, it sits at the bridge of the nose. All you have to do is just pinch that down a little bit once it's on the nose, and that kind of secures it in place and um, holds it in place a little bit easier, um, so it doesn't rock back and forth. A couple other devices that we have are the actual trach collars. We have two different sizes, one for the adult and larger pediatric patients, and one for the infants. And again, this connects to the blue hose, everything connects to the blue hose, and it just sits right over the trach, and then we're able to, again, humidify and provide oxygen directly to the trach. So we have many options here that we can use. One of the big, biggest things is, is if you're requiring higher saturations, if um, oxygen requirements such as greater than 50% oxygen and your patient is 
setting lower or net seeing improvement on the 40 or 50 percent oxygen, um, just let us know and we'll come over and uh, maybe choose a different device and maybe something's going on with the patient where they need to escalate care. Um, so that's an overview of the aerosol delivery devices here at uh, Boston Children's Hospital. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact a respiratory therapist and we'll be glad to assist you. Hi, I'm Amber from Respiratory and I'm going to talk about non breathers. This is a non breather. It consists of a reservoir bag, a one-way valve, and a mask. So this is used to deliver high FiO2 if your patient's requiring 100% oxygen. So you're going to hook it up to a flow meter and you're going to turn it up to 10 to 15 liters per minute and make sure that the reservoir bag inflates all the way. When your patient inhales, the one-way valve is going to open and, and you can inhale 100% oxygen. When your patient exhales, the one-way valve closes so that your patient isn't rebreathing their CO2. And when they breathe out, they breathe out through these two valves. If your patient is requiring 100% oxygen, we need to be notified immediately. You can call us at 84920 or page us at 7377 or RESP because they may require higher levels of support. We hope that this has been informative. If you have any questions about oxygen devices or any questions about your patient's respiratory status, feel free to call 84920 or page us at 7377 or RESP. Welcome to Boston Children's. Good luck with the rest of your orientation.